Okay, morning guys. So it's the next day back up at the workshop and it's been pretty good this week. I think I've been up here Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and today Friday. So, and also the previous Saturday. So it's been a pretty good innings this week. Um, but it shows on the, on the Land Rover really getting a lot done. And I've literally just been working on the Land Rover this week. Uh, nothing on the Porsche at all. So um, I phoned up the TÜV Steller, um, the uh, MOT center this morning. And I've made an appointment uh, with, uh, with them on Tuesday next week, just to go in, not with the car at this point, but just to take all the paperwork in, a few photographs, uh, just, to discuss the, uh, just to discuss the car with them and how best we, we um, carry out the test. Because what I want to do also is put a historic uh, license plate on it, and they call it over here a Haar Kennzeichen, Haar, H for historic. Uh, and it, uh, it comes right at the end of the uh, number plate. So you can choose your number plate. Either they can give you one over here or you for a little bit more money, you can choose your number plate and then there will be a, an H at the end of it. And yeah, that helps for, for various things like um, just to prove that it's a, a historic car, which is an, a, an original car and it helps increase the value. And also things like road tax, I think, is cheaper and insurance is cheaper as well. So it's something I definitely want to do. But in itself, it costs a little bit more money and takes more time. So that's what the meeting on Tuesday is, 11 o'clock on Tuesday. So you'll have to have to think of me then. So today I'm going to get the last couple of things done that I know I need for the MOT. And that is securing the brake lines to the chassis at the back, which are still cable tied on. And... Um, yeah, everything else really, things like the D-rings and the internal lights uh, are, yeah, you know, things things that I can just do after that. Or maybe if I get to do them beforehand, I will do them. But the brake lines are the most important things. As you saw from yesterday's video, the car is running a lot better. I'm just going to film starting it up this morning for the first time. I'm also going to check the, uh, the volt droppage across the uh, battery when I start it but the battery was running a little bit better yesterday. I'm sure it's just because the car's just been sitting around it needs a really good run. And yesterday, although it wasn't a big run, I was driving it for, or I was, was running it for, uh, I don't know, maybe half an hour or so. So that did definitely help. But it's getting quite exciting because uh, the idea, the goal is to get it on the road before Christmas. So the first step is to meet with the guys at the MOT Centre on Tuesday next week. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so I'll have to check that footage to see whether that dropped or not. Um, but the, as you saw, the battery started with that usual lethargicness. Um, it started better yesterday, but uh, I did have the trickle charger on right up until I started it. So I'm guessing the battery is sort of, maybe not on its last legs, but it's just not, not very strong anymore. But anyway, uh, it started a lot better, I must admit. Um, so I'm really happy with that. It didn't need much choke at all. Um, it started with quite a clear exhaust actually and let me turn that off and I've taken it entirely off the choke already so that is already no choke but I'm much happier with all the work that I did yesterday give it a bit of gas I mean you could probably do with a little bit of choke but but that's pretty good I'm pretty pleased with that I'll leave it running for a bit and then I'll carry on with some work. Okay, so I've just been doing some more investigation on that terrible vibration and I've narrowed it down to <clears throat> this wing here. So I think it's the inner wing or the splash guard 
rubbing against the outside wing. So listen to this. Uh, just that, that's that's it. It obviously goes away when I put my knee against it. So I'm gonna chuck something in there and then look for a more permanent solution. Okay, so that was one of the vibrations, but not the big vibration I can hear inside. So I've got to search for that some more. But anyway, what I'm gonna do now is get underneath the car and look at securing that brake pipe to the chassis. Underneath the car, and you can see what I mean here. At the top there, I've got a cable tie. Here, I've got a cable tie, and there's one here. The only problem I have is is actually getting to drill a hole in here because there's not much room at all. So I'm gonna to have to try and get the drill in here and see where I can fit, a uh, fit you know, get a hole in. I think that's probably gonna be the easiest one, getting a, a drill above the rear drive shaft here. That'll do that one nicely. And I'll have to see, maybe I don't need three securing points. Maybe I just need one or two, but this is gonna be mega difficult because the transfer case is in the way. I need like a, a dentist drill or something like that. So that one, that one went in pretty well, and I'm just going to cut that cable tie now. Let's see if I can get my arm around there. It's ridiculous. I got my lift in there, and the moment I need it, the the other car is taking it up. But anyway, that's life. Um, so that's one one of the cable ties done. <coughs> I also saw this these two holes in the chassis here, you could get like a, uh, a plastic riv nut and stick it in there and put a little, put a little cap on, uh, put a little clamp on there as well. Because here you can see the vibration of the car will most likely knock that. If I don't do that, then maybe I'll put like a rubber protector on here just to space it from the, from the chassis. So that is that done. I've put some copper grease on there. It's nice and tight, and now I've got to see about getting one done down here. Okay, so I got the perfect little solution there. It's not actually rubbing, but just in case it does, I got some old fuel line and uh, zip tied it to that brake line. Okay, so I managed to get that last one in there. Scratched the chassis a little bit, but that's no big deal. Um, that's nice and tight, and. This is the this is the solution I found with the uh, rubbing brake pipe back here, and that is the second hook. So this here is my last cable tie um, holding on the brake lines, which obviously it's not doing its job anymore because they've all got clips. So I'm just going to snip that one off if I can. Where is that going to go? There we go. The last cable tie on the car. All the important stuff on. Of course, there are a bunch of other ones doing other stuff, but uh, that makes it legal now. Just moving on to the next job, I thought I'd put the D-rings on now. So I'll put it on time-lapse because it's a bit laborious and takes a bit of time, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do now. So it's going pretty well. I'm just going up in up in drill bit sizes, uh, small, medium, and large. Uh, but I've now got to find one that will fit these. I think they're M10. Anyway, what I did was I went to the DIY store and bought some bought some new ones. They're a bit long, but um, those are the shortest they had, and it's uh, A2 aluminium as well. So with the locking nuts and all the washers. So I'll carry on. Absolutely 
knackered. Um, both of those are done. But I just borrowed these from work, which is perfect. This is a 10.2 and a 10.5. I'll probably go with the 10.5, which is still smaller than what was in there originally, but it'll be fine for the bolts that I've bought. And then I'll fit the D-ring, the first one at least. Okay, so that's all of the holes drilled on here. I'll give that a bit of a better clear up afterwards. Hoover it all out. Where is the D-ring? That fits nicely. And let me just drop one of my new bolts in there. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yep, lovely. I'll get those fitted now. gonna shorten these bolts a bit I just put them in but you can really see them very clearly from from the outside because they're so long so I'm just gonna shorten them a bit about halfway so whenever I'm cutting bolts I always fit a nut first so any distortion or damage that happens to the thread, you can literally mend by unscrewing that bolt. Doing it the other way around is pretty difficult. There we are. Okay, so I'm just gonna fit the last two bolts now and tighten everything up, and that's that side done. Okay, so just tightening up the last bolts here now. Thought I might as well video that. I've still got the other one to do, but um, I'm not gonna fit, I'm not gonna video doing both of them. So I'll cut the bolts down. I'll tell you how long in a minute, but about halfway. So it's worth putting this one in first uh, because there's a blockage here on that side and it makes it very difficult to get to if you've done this one. So put that one in first. And what I did was I put some copper grease on the, on the washer so it stuck the washer to the underside of this metal because it's very difficult to get your hands in there. So sticking the washer to the underside, then all you've got to do is put the bolt on and that made it a darn sight easier. All right. That's it. Right. So, that is one D-ring on. And it looks bloody brilliant. Nice and straight too. 
Okay guys, so I've got to nip off now because I'm helping somebody move house, but I have finished the D-rings, which I am extremely pleased about. I was umming and ahhing today whether I should start them or not, but I am really, really happy. This one is slightly bent over, you can see to the right, but that doesn't really bother me. It's obviously been used at some point, um, but they are very, very cool. Very pleased with that. So, it's Friday afternoon. I'm, as I said, going off to help somebody move house and I wish you all a good weekend. Okay guys, so it's Saturday and I've just been up here with a colleague of mine who bought this timing tool and we've just been setting the timing on the car for the last half an hour or so and we reckon we've got it pretty much perfect now so I'll just let you listen to the, to the engine tone. It's quite warm now so let me know what you think. I mean, to my mind, look, there's nothing, nothing coming out the back. It smells normally. I guess the reason why I thought it was really stinking before is because I'm just so used to the smell of normal, modern cars. And of course, they have catalytic converters and, and all sorts to, to make the stink coming out the back less polluting and less smelly. So this hasn't obviously got any of that. So I just have to remind myself of that, that it's an old, old car. But this is ticking over at about 550 RPM and we set it to uh, what we think is six degrees uh, before top dead center for the 93 uh, octane fuel we've got here. And that seems to be pretty good. So I'm pretty pleased with that. That's one of the last major steps before I take it through put it through the MOT over here and also although that battery is still pretty low I checked the volt drop on starting and it didn't drop below no, 9 volts it just turned over the engine really slowly um, and this morning it did exactly the same thing so I'm probably just gonna live with that because if as long as it starts the car I don't really mind uh, and then when I'm feeling a bit richer maybe after Christmas I hope not that I'm rich but uh, I will buy a new battery for it but at the moment that to me is absolutely fine really pleased with that my colleague silvio who just helped me set the timing on the land rover also bought me a gearbox jack i think that's what it's called anyway but really kind of him it cost me a crate of beer can you believe it it carries two and a half tons and he took away his three and a half ton jack uh, but said i could have this one and i am very pleased it's just another really important tool for my garage. Okay guys, so while I'm up here, I thought I'd just do a couple of small jobs, or one small job at least, which I just noticed. These panels have got quite a few open gaps in them. I've just cut out the old silicon that was in there or whatever the heck it was. Um, it probably came from where I was knocking this, this dent out roughly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape it up and just seal those gaps. I'm gonna do across the top there as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this off, see how it looks. I put the tape on just so it doesn't go everywhere, but hopefully that has worked. Very nice. It's so messy, this stuff. It's unbelievable. So anything you can do to stop it from getting everywhere, the better. Took a bit of the old paint off there. Never mind. Cool. All right, I'm gonna to have to go over that again just to flatten it down a bit because the tape lifted it up again, but that's pretty much all I was looking to do. And on this side as well. Do from this side maybe. It's very difficult to do all this filming and not block the camera all the time. going to flatten that down a little bit and that's it done so I just tidied that up with some white spirit 
and actually it looks like a really thick joint but it's not because basically the paint on this wing is black underneath you can see it's all scraped up there so obviously that was a, a black wing before or maybe it was a new wing and that's the undercoat that's probably probably the case or maybe it's the original wing and that's the original under, undercoat who knows but anyway that small job is also done both sides